All right, guys, so we're going to start our video series by talking about uh, what is chemistry. We discussed this a little bit in class, so you should have your own notes about this subject, but I just want to make sure that you get a nice review here. Uh, and, of course, of course, you can watch the video as many times as you want to, so that's one advantage. When you do watch the video, I recommend having it open in one window and then opening your top hat notes in the other window because there are some questions that you get graded on as we go along. All right, so first off, what is chemistry? Uh, we discussed in class that chemistry is matter and energy. So here we have matter and energy, okay? And we want to study the composition, which means what is it made out of, the structure, which means how is it arranged, and the properties of matter and energy, which are things we can describe. The reason that people study chemistry is different for each person. For me, I study it because I want to improve the human condition. So for me, that means, that means studying cancer treatment drugs because if we understand how they work, we can make better treatments. Um, chemistry touches on every discipline, on every subject, and so when people go into medicine or science, this is one of the first classes they have to take. The ideas that we develop in chemistry, we build on through every class we take from now on. So the reason we take it first is because it's central. It's, it's the middle of all the other subjects, and we kind of build upon it, our understanding as we go. So here's one of the questions that you get to answer. Go into your top hat at this point. You can pause the video and answer what is chemistry and why would you study it? There is participation points for this, so make sure you go into top hat and you do that. Okay, so matter is what makes everything. Um, the desk you're sitting in, the paper that you write on, everything that you touch is made out of matter. Even things that don't seem like you're touching them, like air, air is always around us. We don't generally think about it. We don't think about the fact that air is touching us all the time. Um, although, I suppose if it stopped touching you, you would probably know it pretty quickly. Uh, so all of those things are called matter. Um, so our definition uh, of matter is essentially, we're going to write it in purple here, I think, that it has volume. I hope your writing is better than mine. I'm writing on a computer, so you just have to excuse this terrible handwriting. So it has volume, and it takes up space. So that's what volume is. Volume takes up space. And it also has mass. Mass, OK. So we did define mass the other day. It's the resistance to movement, all right? So you have to push on something that has mass to get it to move. It doesn't just move all on its own. OK. So all things that are considered matter have volume and mass. That is, they take up space and they have mass. OK. So every piece of matter is made out of atoms. And every atom is a particular type that we call an element. So diamond is a piece of matter that's made from the element carbon. Actually, carbon is also the same thing that makes up the lead in your pencil. It's a different form of it, obviously, or it would be, it would not write very well. Diamonds don't write very well. Aluminum foil is made out of aluminum, which is another element. So carbon, aluminum, both of those are elements. Other elements you might know is oxygen and hydrogen and helium, okay? Now, if we take a piece of aluminum foil and we rip it into two pieces, and then we rip one of those two pieces again, and we keep going, ripping, 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 eventually we're going to come to some tiny, tiny piece that we can't rip anymore. That tiny piece, the indivisible piece, is called an atom. The idea of an atom came from ancient India about in the 6th century, so that was a long time ago. Um, about a thousand years later, 
the Greeks came up with the term Adam. Okay, so they took the idea from ancient India, but the term, the phrase Adam came from the Greeks. And it just means the smallest indivisible piece. Okay, so what I want you to do is go back to your top hat notes and you can click right on these words and it will take you to a video, a TED Ed video. Watch that short video and then I want you to tell me here how small is an atom in your own words. Okay, keep in mind that your classmates can see your answer, okay, and that it is graded. Okay, so if atoms are the smallest indivisible particle of matter and different types of atoms are all called elements, what comes next? Okay, the answer to that question is compounds. Compounds come next. Okay, so atoms are made out of neutrons, protons, and electrons. And remember that neutrons and protons are in the nucleus, as we saw in the video. And if you imagine the nucleus to be the size of a marble, and you put it right on the middle of a 50-yard line of the football field, the electrons are are orbiting around the outside of the football field, sort of up in the stands, okay? So, atoms are made out of nu the nucleus, which contains all the mass, neutrons and protons, and then on the outside of that is the electrons. There are 118 different elements, and I gave you a periodic table that shows you the symbol for each and every one of them. We already had a couple of examples. There's carbon, there's oxygen, which has the symbol O. Let's see what else we got. Diamond, we said, which is another kind of carbon. Um, gold and platinum and copper, all of these things are elements. There's 118 of them, and they're the smallest thing. They cannot be divided any smaller than that. But if I take two different elements and I put them together, I can make something called a compound. So, for example, CO put together is carbon monoxide, which of course is the toxic gas that gets emitted from your car um, if you leave the garage door closed for too long while your car is running. It can certainly cause you some problems. Um, sometimes we call compounds molecules. Those two phrases mean the same thing, but carbon monoxide is a compound that happens to be toxic. There's lots and lots and lots of compounds in the world, some of which are toxic, some of which are not. So this one, H2O, is definitely not toxic. This is water, okay? And when we write the chemical formula like this, what we mean is that there's two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. So we have a combination of two different elements, and when they come together, they make a new compound with completely different properties from the original elements. Hydrogen and oxygen as elements are gases. They're both flammable gases. Water, of course, we know is a liquid and is not flammable. So completely different properties. All right, so in Top Hat, go ahead and take a look at this question and tell me which one of these four options is a compound, meaning made out of two or more individual elements. Okay, we're going to pick up here in the next video. Thanks for watching.